to prune. Give the definition of the word pruning. To prune means to trim a tree or a shrub or a bush. But we want to replace ourselves as that tree today. So we are the one being pruned. And there are two types of pruning that will take place. God prunes. Sometimes God trims some things out of our life. But there are times where God will ask us to make some trimmings. So to prune means to trim by cutting away dead or overgrown branches stems or stems especially to increase the fruitfulness and growth so if we are the ones being trimmed and pruned we need to look at some people that are in our lives that are dead or some people that have been in our lives too long that are not healthy for us spiritually so as believers we need to start pruning some things or some people what does the word season mean the word season means a period of the year marked by a particular climate. You know it's winter when three months of cold air hangs around. Marked by a climate. Or a particular activity. Right now it's football season. Football is being played. It's football season. Or festivity. Or an event. Amen? We know normally in November, around October, November is election time. Every four years, we choose a new president. So it's election season. There are different seasons that take place in our life. Well, God said, this is a season for you to start getting rid of some people or some things so you can grow and be fruitful and increase your relationship with God. The word season also means a proper or suitable time. A fixed time in a year for a sport or fruit or vegetable. Right now, we're in pecan season. You get all the pecans you want right now. You can't get watermelon year-round because watermelon don't come every year-round every year. At the same time, you need to get a fresh head of lettuce. You can buy lettuce in the winter, but it's normally a little bit more expensive because it ain't lettuce season. So when we understand what the word pruning mean and season mean, it means a time to trim or cut away dead or overgrown branches. The benefits of pruning a tree or shrub is necessary to ensure that they maintain their health and vigor. What is vigor? Physical strength and health. You trim trees so they'll be healthy and strong. Well, God asking us to trim some things out of our lives so we can be healthy, strong, and useful. Useful. As believers, God is calling each one of us to examine our life with him examine our life with others and examine our life within ourselves. Sometimes you need to take a good look at yourself and take a good look at your heart and ask yourself am I pleasing not to God, not to others, am I pleasing to myself? And if you're not pleasing to yourself and you feel like you could be doing better as an individual, let alone you know God is not pleased with you. So you need to take a look at your relationship with God I need to take a relationship with people that's in my life. And then I need to take a good look at myself. And look at God and look at your people that's in your life. Is everybody in your life really beneficial to you? Why are they hanging around you? Why are you hanging around them? How can you benefit from them? How can they benefit from you? You don't need dead people in your life. Amen. And don't you think for one moment that people can't change you. People can change you for the better or the worse. If you hang around rich people every day, you don't think you're going to want to start having some money? Okay. You're going to get tired of riding their Bentley and their Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Going to their house with an indoor pool. Mm -hmm. That may make you tighten up and want to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Not saying you're going to ever be rich, but that's going to change your mindset. When you hang around positive people, you become positive. Mm -hmm. When you hang around negative people, you start thinking negative. May not, may not overnight, but the Bible says can two walk together except they agree. You hanging with that person for a reason. It's something y'all have in common. You don't see a pimp and a preacher hanging out. If you do, somebody ain't really a preacher. Or somebody ain't really a pimp. You don't see cats and dogs running down the street. This morning was three dogs walking. They was hanging out. I'm sure if I'd have kicked one, the other two would have bit me. So if you want to be in a relationship with God, first examine that relationship you have with God because Jesus died for you. Pastor ain't died for you. I can't put you in hell or heaven. 
But there is one standing in the gap who was the mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus. It's time to cut some people out your life. It's time. They ain't gonna do nothing but pull you down. And you ain't gonna know as long as you hang around them. They call crab mentality. You ever seen crabs in the bucket? They all can get out if they help one another. But they ain't gonna help one another. The minute you get to the top and start having it, they go, you a crab just like that. Get back down there. You don't see eagles and chickens hanging out together. We eagles. We don't hang out with chickens. The how the chicken can fly is in the tree, but the eagle soars in the mountains. Yeah. And he can see his food miles and miles away. He's a top bird. Top of the line bird. Why are you hanging with chickens and you're an eagle? Amen. You don't even realize you're an eagle. Because God got his hand on you, but you don't see it. It's time to cut some people out. There are two types of prunes I want to discuss. God prunes. That's some things that God going to take from you. He don't, He know Because he know they're not good for you. Look to them and say, they ain't going to kill you. It's just going to slow you down. He ain't going to kill you. Now. And then there's some things he want you to get rid of yourself. And he's not going to do it. Because he wants you to, he want to see if you really love him. When God prunes and cuts sometimes it's our, it, our things out of our life, it is in order to make our life better in the relationship with him for the advancement of his kingdom. I'm only doing this because I want you and me to get close. And it's going to help my kingdom grow. And I need you to help it grow. That's why we pray that prayer. Thy will be done on earth as it was. Y'all know what it says. His desires for all believers is that we be fruitful. And one way to be fruitful in the eyesight of God is for him to cut away some things out of our life. Because God knows what you need and what you don't need. You don't know what you need. You think you know what you need. Normally when we pick stuff, we can see ourselves in that stuff. We can't see God in it. It's normally selfish decisions. Yep. Sometimes God will cut away. Says, These are some things that God may cut out of our life. Sometimes he may slow down your finances. Because mm -hmm. when you make a lot of money, you get ignorant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do better as a middle class person than a rich person. Mm -hmm. some of us, sometimes he got to touch our health. He don't kill us. He just make us get a, a little cold or something for two weeks. Where well, you can't taste no food like you did me. Yeah. It's hard to eat a steak and you can't taste it because you got a cold. But well, I'm going to look to him and say, he's going to eat it anyway. He's just, he just making a point. So he taste it. Still going to eat it. I just want to taste it if I don't even mind. Sometimes he'll touch your loved one. Touch him. Notice I say touch him just to get you, slow you down. Sometimes he'll take away some of the material blessings. Yes, he will. He gonna give them back. He just won't take them away for now because he keeps trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll take their position at the job or at the church, right. and sometimes he may want you to move. You've been around. You've been in that hood too long. He wants you to change neighborhood. Right. Those are some things. Sometimes God will prune out of our life, and God knows what's best for us. Mm -hmm. But there are some things God desire that you prune, mm -hmm. that you cut back, mm -hmm. that you cut loose. And he's not going to do them for you. What are some things that may need to prune it in our life? Sometimes we need to take a good look at ourselves. And what are some things you're doing that can better your relationship with God? Sometimes God looks at our heart. We need to start looking at our friends. We need to start looking at some of our family members. Some of our co-workers. Or any relationship any relationship, no matter what kind it is, that starts your relationship and grow toward the kingdom. You need to look at it. Those are some things we went over on lesson number one. Now we're on lesson number number one and two. Those are some things we went over on lesson one and two. Now we're on lesson number three. And I got a new scripture I just want to share. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily beset us. Beset us mean that's in circle. It's some things that we know every time we do it, we're going to act a certain way. Amen. Come on now. Amen. It's some drinks we drink. We know every time we drink, we're going to act a certain way. Amen. It's some certain people we get around, we know every time we get around them, we're going to climb. Right. It's some places we go, every time we go, when we get over there, we know we're going to act a fool. Right. You know what they are. Amen. Not saying you're doing nothing bad. <laughs> Or you're going to do something where it's going to get you in trouble with the law, but it's just not good for you. 
It may be somebody from your past. It may somebody be somebody you dealing with right now that they know how to get under your skin. And you say that's your best friend. Cut it. Cut them. Cut them. If you want to advance toward God, I'm saying. Now, if you want to stay the same and never grow, then you keep doing what you've been doing. Because you, you find out five years later, you're going to be in the same situation or worse. Because people that don't have nothing, they're going to let you have nothing. And that's one of the hardest things to do is let go of people from our past. That's why I don't go to class reunions. Because they're going to want to talk about pastor you speed the bed. I'm trying to help somebody now. And I'm not the same guy I was in the kindergarten. When you got born again, you are a new creature in Christ. And sometimes God don't want them to talk about your past. He wanted to stay there because it was a part of your life that's in your past and that's all it was. Right. Right. I don't have no kindergarten friends unless they're doing what I'm doing today and that's serving the Lord. Amen. I can get in trouble by myself. Amen. I don't need nobody to help me get in trouble. That's right. Right. So you got to examine everything in your life if you want to grow in the body of Christ. Now if you don't want to grow and stay mediocre, then you keep doing what you're doing. And I guarantee you, the people around you are going to make sure you don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. So watch this. Hebrews 12. 1. Turn it in your Bible. Look at your name and say, he ain't going to hold us long. When the series is over, it's over. Sometimes we're going to do like HISD, early dismissal. When I'm through preaching, I'll turn you loose. We're going to look at Hebrews 12. 1. You got to lay aside that thing that easily gets you trapped up. We're not talking about the things that you can get rid of on your own. Like it ain't no big deal for me to stop eating carrots. <laughs> hey. <laughs> but to stop eating them hog crackling. Oh, I'm going to struggle because they ain't healthy for me. Hmm? So it may be something like that I'm saying. But you you got to examine what what. What may be my hang up may not be your hang up. It could be one person. It could be one social media website you need to get rid of. It could be one phone number. It could be one job. You may have to take, take your lunch break at a different time. I don't know. You know though. And you know what the spirit trying to say. You probably get you probably thinking about a couple of people or places now. God said, cut them and watch me move in like a flooded blessing. Hebrews 12, 1, look what it says. Wherefore, seeing we are also are compassed about with so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. Some of y'all got too much weight in your life. And the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, that's who you should be looking for, because you're in the race, you're running. The author and finish of our faith, yes. who had for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He says, let us lay aside every weight. You ever ran in a race? Try running in a race with a backpack on that weighs 40 pounds. A three pound football helmet, five pound anchor weights, knee pads, elbow pads, some steel gloves, and run. And you got a man sitting on the side of you in a thong and running barefooted and no shirt on. Who you think gonna run the race? <laughs> and on top of that, while you running the race, you got people on the sideline, which is them demons trying to distract you. And Jesus at the finish line say, just stay focused. Look at me. I'm, I'm the author. Stay, make it. That's why a true Olympian, he don't care if he coming last, but he do got to finish the course. That's right. And you got all this weight on you and try to run this race. Mm -hmm. You're going to come in last because you got too much weight. Mm -hmm. He said, take off some of that weight so you can run freely. Right. Some of y'all got people in your life, you know they're not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And you don't have, and not that you don't want to get away from you don't have the strength to do it. And God said, that's why I want to bless you. Mm -hmm. The spirit of deed is willing, but the what? The flesh is weak. And you can't worry about hurting their feelings. Mm -hmm. You're going to save their feelings from being hurt, but you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And 
ain't nothing worth you going to hell. Amen. Amen. And if God be for you, who going to be against you? When God called me to preach, I wasn't even in church. I wasn't even a member of a church. But I used to look to and say, but he used to go to church. <laughs> he said, but that's enough in you. Mm -hmm. And then when I responded to the call, now here it is some almost 19 years later, and he gave me his lesson to help y'all. Because I had to go to, he said, now you got to cut all your friends. He didn't say, cut some of them. He said, you got to cut them all. Because mm -hmm. wow. that word you came from was darkness. You can't have none of them friends unless they go by the blood and come on this side. You got to cut. I had to start all over from scratch. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to be a successful preacher, because if you hang around them same people, you're going to be preaching the gospel and still selling crack on the side. Mm -hmm. oh, we're going to get real with it now. Huh? And don't you think they ain't got something that's doing it? Doing all kinds of stuff because it's not that they bad people. They won't let go of their past. Yeah. They won't cut them folk out their lives who God already showed them need to go. Yeah. Either you going to please God or you're going to please your friends. Yeah. And Jesus said you can't have what? Two masters. Because you're going to hate one and love the other. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? You ever tried to love two? You can't. You can't, but somebody's going to be getting the short end of the stick. Yeah. Somebody gonna be saying, "You sure you ain't never got nothing? Why you ain't never got? Cause you spending it all over there." No. <laughs> Somebody gonna realize you faking and shaking on me. And God said, "You can't love me and think, cause you ain't gonna be loyal. You ain't gonna be devout. You're not gonna be faithful. You're gonna make excuses for not serving. It gonna sprinkle outside, and you gonna say the storm will pass. I couldn't make it." <laughs> And when you love something, ain't nothing going to, you know that, nothing going to keep you from it. People love that money. It be flooded. They tell you, don't go to work if you don't have to. People drown trying to get to work. Why? Because they got to pay that rent because they don't want to lose their house. They don't want to lose their car. They love that stuff. And we ain't going to let no barricade stop us from getting to that job at that time clock. And they tell you when the winter time, black ice on the road. Don't go to work with you. They, how many times you look at you and see all them accidents? They try. But let them, what if we would like that with the law? Look to your neighbor and say, you finna close. You finna close. You know what would really bless me if I could see this before I die? If I came here and y'all would slip on the sidewalk and say, I want to be the first one in the church. <laughs> They had some people that were asleep on the sidewalk since Tuesday for Black Friday. Yeah, they did. They did. And I slept on. I used to sleep on the floor when I go out of town when I was a little boy. That 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 ground. That I can't sleep. Thank God for old bed. <laughs> I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine sleeping on concrete for three, four days? And some of them nights it was cold. Mm -hmm. But they wanted to be the first to get the flat screen for ninety nine dollars. And in one town, they showed on news somebody got killed in the parking lot. They did. So you see what I'm saying? You think God, the devil is making a fool out of us? Do you think God is pleased with that? No. When he could, listen, God could bless you so good where you can go in there and shop when it ain't Black Friday. Mm -hmm. If you got to go shop only when it's Black Friday, or, or do you call that a blessing? No. Sure. When these people controlling you? Lately, I've been getting so many texts on my phone. I wish Walgreens Black Friday. Who wants some fish oil pills for Black Friday? <laughs> I just think we just a fool. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need no fish oil pills. They think we so stupid that we're just coming by stuff because it's Black Friday. Buy one, get two free. Be full of salmon. I can't bet around nobody. Everybody is sending me texts to my phone, Black Friday. Companies I don't even know. Black Friday. Man, I sleep on Black Friday. And I ain't getting on Cyber Monday. They be hacking your credit card. They can't wait till you start swiping. We better get away from serving like this world, sir. And I'm going to wait till two weeks from now when there ain't no selling. Go in there and get what I need to get it going. And wait for all the lines to go down. 
I serve a rich yeah. bar. I can go on Black Friday if I'm just bored, but I ain't got to go on Black Friday. Yes, say that, Friday. Yes. 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 So God is saying, take a look at your life. Take a look at our relationship. Mm -hmm. And take a look at the people around you and make some adjustments. And all it takes is sometimes a minor adjustment. You ain't got to cut everybody, but I'm sure something or someone you need to cut back so you can get closer to God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Maybe somebody here today, I want to offer you to